I am here with my new co-host, Dr. Dalal Al-Aradi. Hi, good evening everyone. My name is Dr. Dalal Al-Aradi and I am co-hosting tonight with uh, Dr. Noor. Tonight we have a very exciting show. We have two special guests and if you have any questions for them throughout the show, just contact us on the following numbers or you can mention us on Twitter as well. And here are the numbers. show Dr. Salman al Sabah and Ms. Amna Haider and they were talking to us about uh, their upcoming conference. Uh, their conference was the uh, first annual uh, GOS meeting which was uh, they were talking about uh, obesity and uh, bariatric surgeries in general and that was hosted at uh, Jumeirah Hotel and this is our report regarding that conference.
spend some time with him and Kuwait and speak at this Congress. conference was under the patronage of, uh, the, uh, of Sheikh uh, Mohammed Abdullah, the Minister of uh, Health and the, uh, and he's our Minister of Health, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you did a good job though in the, the conference. Thank you. Yeah, it was you really. Were the host, huh? um, I was asked to host five minutes uh, before the conference started, and uh, of course I said yes. I mean, I don't mind doing yes, that awesome. kind of stuff. You did a good job. <laughs> but really, the organization of the of the conference was amazing, and they did an excellent job at Amir Hospital, and I'm very proud of uh, the of the work that they've done. So, do we have another report? Um, the second report that we have is actually also Amir Hospital. We're dominating the field mm -hmm. right now. It's uh, regarding the work of the physical therapy and uh, rehabilitation department um, at Amir Hospital.
patient treating. I'm a physical user rehabilitation senior specialist in Amiri Hospital. Welcome to the physical user rehabilitation department in Amiri Hospital, which was established two years ago. We are based on uh, the basement one next to the nutrition department. Our department consists of a waiting room and a secretary room, a head of department room, two treatment room, and a, a waiting room. The first treatment room consists of the neuro cam, which is rehab, which is balance equipment, testing the balance for the stroke patient and the MS patient. As well as, as well as any musculoskeletal injury which can affect the balance. The balance is diagnostic as well as therapeutic for treatment. The treatment room number two consists of the laser acupuncture which can uh, treat the topical laser as well as uh, intravenous laser for the neuro condition as well like MS stroke as well as uh, for uh, low back pain and neck pain. Our department not only for diagnostic purposes we are diagnostic as well as therapeutic. We see the patient uh, take a history to examination to give a diagnosis then set a plan for treatment including referral to physiotherapy as well as the modalities which we have which include the balance equipment as well as the laser treatment. viewers. Um, I hope you liked the reports we had tonight. Uh, we have two special guests for you. We have Dr. Naila al Majidi and we have Dr. Noura Nuri. Um, welcome, first of all, to our show. Um, now, uh, tell us about yourselves. Um, I'll introduce myself. My name is uh, Dr. Naila al Majidi. I am a senior registrar in internal medicine. I'm doing a uh, fellowship and the Kuwaiti Board of Endocrinology and Diabetes. So this is who I am. And Noura? I'm Dr. Noura Nouri. I'm a resident in psychiatry. And we're both part of the group that we're going to talk about today. Uh, and it's called Tabibat. So we heard about Tabibat. And uh, for me, I knew it from Instagram. Mm. So can you tell us about it? Well, um, <coughs> this is a group. Uh, we decided we're a group of uh, six uh, female uh, uh, Kuwaiti doctors that got together, uh, starting with me, Naila and Noura. We also have four other members with us. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Abuthain Al-Bash, who's a pediatric uh, doctor specialized in genetics. Uh, Dr. Abir Lamtawa, she's a, also a, she's a specialist in internal medicine. And Dr. Sra Bursli and Dr. Nawal Nasrallah, both in uh, family medicine. Uh, we started off, uh, we got together, uh, we're friends, we got together and we decided to form a volunteer group uh, and called it Tabibat. And um, it, um, it, we have several goals. It's, I would say, um, first of all, it's, uh, it's voluntary and it's independent. We're a single ent entity. We don't belong to any organization and it's also a non-profit. And uh, it's kind of exclusive, just to Kuwaiti female doctors, medical students, and dentists. So Dr. Naila, Dr. Noor, welcome to the show. Um, I wanted to ask, what made you start, I mean, what was the idea that first um, brought up Tabibat, and why did you choose Instagram to launch your um, society, if I might say? Um, we, 
we decided to we decided to form a group uh, specifically for Kuwaiti female doctors, uh, dentists, and medical students, or Kuwaiti Kuwaiti female uh, uh, doctors, or anyone working in the medical field, or will work in the medical field in the future, um, because we wanted um, something to empower f female Kuwaiti wow. doctors. Yeah, yeah, we need somebody to do that yeah. for us, really. Yeah. So, so basically, we were thinking that. Uh, all, well, not all, but mostly what female Kuwaiti doctors do is basically their life is half, half, yeah, you have the time it's at work, or the other half is basically at home, you're resting yeah. from work. I think it's more than half. Yeah, more, more than, than half, half. especially if you're a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But if we're always saying doctors, doctors, is it only for female physicians, or are you also targeting other um, specialties in the medical field? No, it's for all specialties. Anyone who's a doctor, who's a dentist, who's a future doctor, medical students, they're all welcome. So the requirement is a female? Being Kuwaiti for yeah. now, mm -hmm. and uh, being a doctor of any of any uh, rank, any age, any specialty, and uh, and uh, be or being a dentist or being a medical student. And wouldn't that cause problems? I mean, if you're having every age, putting a consultant next to an intern, wouldn't that clash? Delal loves to ask controversial <laughs> questions. <laughs> I do. I'm Dr. Controversy. <laughs> no, the whole idea behind it is to have everyone blend in together mm -hmm. and so that we can share our experiences. For example, at our past event, we had uh, we actually had uh, a few consultants mm -hmm. and uh, we get to connect because at work sometimes you don't get to connect uh, with, consult with consultants when you are a junior. Mm -hmm. So it's so a good chance. Yeah, yeah, so it's a good but chance. I mean, whose idea was it? Like you said, it's like you were just friends. Yeah. yeah. I mean, of course there is someone who thought, thought of this and I presume <laughs> it was you. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I may yeah, have comes up with these <laughs> ideas. Mm -hmm. I may have thought of it, but I couldn't have done anything, anything alone. I just, I may have come up with the idea in the beginning, but then I had to call up my team, and we had to sit together and we had to plan and see what we're going to do, what our goals are, what our visions are, what our future plans are. And it uh, took a bit of work. It took about a month of preparation before we launched it about three months ago. Um, so, but uh, but we are equally. We're all equally responsible. So there is no boss. There is no boss. There is nobody to boss you around. Nobody. We're all working together. We're all equal. And uh, it's amazing what a group of women can do uh, if they get along yeah. without. No, no cat, cat fights, fight. <laughs> not a single one <laughs> until now. <laughs> Were you sponsored? Did anybody approach you to sponsor your um, society, or are you looking for any sponsorships Actually, for that? Actually, what we're doing is uh, right now we're we're trying to get promotions or deals from certain organizations so that we c we can get benefits for our members. For example, uh, at certain spas or dental places, I don't want to announce anything just yet. Mm -hmm because um, we're going to put that on our website which is still under construction mm -hmm. we're going to have a website and we can have people register online so once we get a good like database or registry of everyone um, we can just uh, send that list to certain organizations mm -hmm. and they can give us promotions we already have at least like two or three deals for now that's lovely yeah. and they yeah. don't give you a problem that it's only for a limited um, group of people you, we're limiting them to females and we're limiting them to only um, physicians and no, medical no, I specialists think I think I think we're a good target yeah, actually yeah, happy. for health organizations and for as for dentists and for uh, uh, health other health organizations or organizations that are interested in uh, health and women's health. We're a very good target. We've been followed uh, on Instagram by many of these uh, organizations, and we're, we followed back. Um, so I mean, it's it's a bit of a professional racism. Like you chose doctors mm. and you chose dentists. And medical students, but you didn't talk about physiotherapists or pharmacists. Oh, um, it, they're not included in the um, in the uh, broad definition. But yeah. if if somebody requests uh, a pharmacist or a physiotherapist, or we even have an, had an occupational therapist uh, request to follow us on Instagram, we usually accept. It's really good. Yeah. So right now, accept. if anybody anybody wants to approach you, they're only. Instagram. No, for joining, uh, yeah, you can access us through Instagram, yes. which is at Tabibat six A B E B A T, and the same uh, the same account for Twitter. Uh, or uh, for people who know us, they can just come talk to us directly at work or, or where they call can find us. us. We're available on our phone numbers.
So uh, for the people who don't know about what Habibat means, it actually stands out for female doctors mm -hmm. in Arabic, yeah. mm -hmm. basically. But why did you choose this name? Because we're doctors. And it was and available. And we were so lucky. It was available <laughs> on <laughs> Instagram <laughs> <laughs> and Twitter. No one had taken it before. We thought it was one word that was easy to memorize and easy to spell and uh, to make it easily accessible. Uh, we don't want a lot of underscores, and um, but uh, we thought it was a good name uh, to encompass and our target. Just, you know, and it's just that it was what we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Female doctor. Yes. yes. And um, the thing that is really, really lovely about it is that it's just like it connected. It connects us, female doctors, and this very, you know, it's a, it's actually a large community here yeah. in Kuwait, and we don't have this until now. So. Yeah. Um, do you have any activities so far? For Actually, what doctors? you said about uh, connecting, that's the actual idea behind mm -hmm. Tabibat. This is why, why we actually thought of the group and got together to make it. We want to promote connections between female doctors. Um, like you said, it's a large community and it's difficult to keep connections mm -hmm. between everyone. And everyone is uh, just um, across different specialties. So we want to have like a, a social network where we can support each other, where we can be connected with, with each other, where we can communicate. And uh, from that, um, we, we might yeah, we might be, be able to build a platform for better better healthcare in the future, uh, not only just for social uh, network and social support. Yeah. We are actually a large group, and we, we are yeah. underrepresented. Yes. Yeah. But um, when we're talking about activities, mm -hmm. um, do you do you get any problems uh, because of our work and our uncles mm -hmm. and? OPDs. Yeah. I mean, how has the attendance to your um, activities been so far? Well, we've had, uh, we're a relatively new group, so we haven't had a lot of activities. We've had two activities so far, and we have uh, a calendar that's being set up uh, that will uh, give an idea about future activities. The two activities we've had so far, uh, we had a lecture in October about uh, finance and how to put a good financial plan, which is really important, we think, for female doctors. Yeah, um, uh, we had a very talented speaker. Her name is Reem Yasin. She came and talked to us about it, and there were plenty of questions regarding future planning, uh, present planning, uh, what, how to how open to a save. business, uh, to save to open a business how later on. How not to spend all your money on shopping. How not to spend all our money. <laughs> It's very so hard. Come on. No, very it's hard. hard. That's why we <laughs> needed the lecture. I mean, yes. I mean <laughs> after on calls. It's, it's actually really, you know, gave me a good activity for us guys. Yeah. Yes. Do you have time shopping. for shopping? Shopping. Um, <laughs> no, I don't have time for shopping. It's a good activity. Kind of like retail right? therapy. It's retail therapy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so we, we had that lecture. Um, uh, we had another lecture, which was actually last week. We had a, a very, very, uh, very nice dermatologist. Uh, her name is Dr. Ablal Lafi. She came and talked to us about skin care. Uh, but what's different about this is that she talked to us about skin care. She was talking to doctors. She was so she was talking kind of at our scientific level, and it was also evidence based, which is what That's doctors, yeah, doctors are really looking. Is there a plan to have those talks for the general public? We can later on, yeah. maybe if we expand. We're um, planning to have um, different uh, events for the public. We have like private events for doctors, because uh, like yes. like Naila said, it's uh, different when you when you talk to a public audience mm -hmm. rather, rather than a doctor audience. Exactly, it's yes. just audience. something that is yeah. very, like you can say, it's cozy and it's just for yeah. the, yes. you know, the yes. certain yeah. community. And yes. I think this is your aim. Yes, point. but. Uh, where do you see yourself in the future? Do you see like yourself having a venue or um, a place that is just for this purpose? Inshallah. We'd like to. Headquarters. I hope so. We'd like I mean, to. Uh, We'd yeah. like to. Yeah. That'd be bad place. It's like a clubhouse. Yeah, where everyone yeah. can meet. It'll be open. Mm -hmm. And we'll yeah, just hold lectures and social activities. That's amazing. We need that. Yeah, workshops. Medical. So we had medical and non-medical. We're trying to balance. We want to... Uh, the female doctors to be more well-rounded other that you know we just don't want to only talk about medicine we want to be able to talk about other things I was just going to ask when you meet together do you only speak about medicine no, we try not to <laughs> come on we always do 
yeah. that though. Yeah, a very good point. <laughs> we yeah. do, yeah. once said that life is not medicine. It's <laughs> true. <a> doctor, <laughs> she has a good point. Life is not medicine. I mean, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you think that instead of, you know, bringing doctors to talk about, you know, their own topics, do you have any other speakers or any other activities like um, yeah. outdoors activities, for example? Yeah, yeah. we're planning to do fitness classes and uh, yoga classes. So like Naela said, we want to have like a, a balanced or well-rounded mm-hmm. social schedule. So, uh, for example, the finance uh, lecture was very important because uh, as doctors, we're mostly focused on medical issues. Sometimes you tend to forget about these other mm-hmm. things that, that you use in daily life. So we're trying to kind of uh, get all these things together. That's really nice. And then uh, do you think that, of course, you said that there might be a headquarters for you guys. But is it going to be soon, or do you think it's going to take time? Well, it's because the the fact that we're non-profit maybe makes that a little bit more difficult. But maybe if we um, maybe if we expand and become a larger group with uh, more support, we might be able to do that. Nothing, nothing but is impossible. Wouldn't you need to have a leader for that? A leader? I mean, teamwork. You have to choose a leader. <laughs> like teamwork. We can, yeah. A headquarters. You need. Someone who's responsible. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we have we, we have, have an army. We need a general. Yeah. We have people who kind of assume the leadership role, but it's still a democracy. No, no decisions are made without the agreement of all the members. So and you need, usually you we need the six ma- the the main six yes, members. Yes. The main six members have so we to have agree. Long discussions. We do. <laughs> we have we long agree. discussions. <laughs> but but and we have like to so compromise sometimes. But uh, a lot of times, most of the times, yeah. we agree. I mean, now that you're a starting group, I think that would be okay. I mean, six people are going to be together, and you you can talk and you can yeah. agree on something. But don't you see that in the future, when you're becoming inshallah yeah. bigger and you've expanded and you want to open a headquarters? We'll yeah. probably put that Still. to a vote. Yeah. No, we can probably put that to a vote, just you know, just to have it official. But otherwise, we'll probably still be running things together. And does your um, specialties, I mean, influence your decisions on bringing your um, bringing workshops or doctors and Dr. Nora, uh, Dr. Nora as a psychiatrist to be and Dr. Naala as an endocrinologist? Do you feel that this influences your choices or your suggestions to the workshops? Well, we try not to, but this is just human nature. For example, if I'm in psychiatry, I'm going to know most of the psychiatrists. Mm-hmm. So it'll be easier for me to get workshops related to psychiatry. So we're kind of biased. Yeah. We can't. But yeah, that's can't really kind of avoid it. that's kind of the beauty of uh, being belonging to different specialities. You're all diverse. Yes, yeah. we're all diverse. So if we need anyone, for example, to come and speak as a dermatologist, uh, and thank God we're all very social. So that mm-hmm. helps a lot. We're of all course, very social, and course. we have a lot of connections. I agree. My first uh, <laughs> episode, I got surgeons here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that she helps says, a like, lot. Home yes. here. <laughs> I wrote my people here. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, you said to us that, you know, we know now why it's all about doctors, and but why is it all females? Because we're very feminist. <laughs> <laughs> That's the honest truth. <laughs> That's true. And uh, we also think that um, females or women doctors in Kuwait need extra care. We want to take care of them better so that they can also take care of themselves. Um, we want. Uh, we think that uh, females in general, doctors or non-doctors, they tend to um, stretch themselves thin a lot between responsibilities at home, uh, at the hospital. We want them to be happy, both inside and outside of work. Yes, to exactly. feel like they belong somewhere yes. other than work and yes. home, of yes. course. Yes. Because, I mean, women are multitaskers. They are. And they do a lot yes. of things. And I, I mean, it's a nice way of relieving the stress by, you know, just, you know, just chatting with a bunch of friends. And I think it's brilliant. It's a brilliant idea. I mean, really, it's uh, something that we are looking forward to, really. Very true. <laughs> and, uh, as a surgeon, being in a male dominant field, yes. I'm all for female <laughs> uh, being together and uh, working together. But were you, were you approached by uh, male um, doctors or physicians or friends that are asking to have like to open a sector or to expand to include the males? Um, were you ever approached for that? We were approached by um, some male doctors saying, hey, why can't we be included in this group? Why is <laughs> it only jealousy. for females? Just, you know, go do your so own group. Uh, we were <laughs> like, for now, it's only for females. Did they yeah. try to add you on Instagram? <laughs> they did. I can't tell you. We can't accept any males <laughs> for now. <laughs> That's really for nice. Now. 
Yeah, but they're I mean, brave enough to request. But well, if we somebody's can. actually, you know, undercover, maybe undercover female <laughs> maybe. doctor going, <laughs> maybe. You know, you That's can expect that. But I mean, I mean, it's uh, the nice thing about it is it does feel like for me, um, I like the idea so much, mm -hmm. and I really can't wait for activities. So, um, I mean, what do you think, other than, okay, the venue, we talked about that, do you have any other future plans for this group? We have a couple of things planned for next month. Uh, we're going to have a dietitian come in and give us a talk about nutrition. And we have a social get-together uh, or a breakfast, and you're welcome to join, of course. Thank you. So, um, that's, the, that's for next month. And then we'll, we'll post uh, the next upcoming event soon on the, on the website. We have a website under construction. I so don't want to say the name just yet because we <laughs> we already have it. Yeah, but so we'll post <laughs> it somewhere. We'll post it. We'll post it we'll on post Twitter. It on I have Twitter. to ask the book club. Is there a book club coming soon? Yes. Please say yes. Yes, yeah. yes. There is a book club. For doctors. We need to. We need to. We're read. <laughs> deep down. <laughs> yes, but the book club will be about non-medical books. Okay. I think we have. Yes, we have enough medical books at that home. That lasts us for a yeah, lifetime. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> and we actually have one of the members, inshallah, she will be joining soon. Uh, she's on a maternity leave right now. Uh, she is going to be heading, starting and heading the book club, hopefully. But soon, soon. Oh, I hope she's, so. Uh, she's, uh, she's, uh, she I reads a lot. I think I know who you're talking about, and I'm really looking forward Good. to her starting <laughs> out the Good. book club. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant idea just, you know, to talk about things that are different from the yes. medical field. It's yes. so refreshing. And the book club is something I think we all need. Mm -hmm. um, reading books is something that I rarely do. But, you know, it's because you have all these textbooks to read. Yeah. And then reading would be the last thing on my mind. Yeah. But, I mean, if it was a group thing, yeah. I would be, you know, encouraged with to actually do that. Deadline. You know, we do we do deadlines very I well. Mean, aren't there movie nights or something? We can I do think, movie nights. I think, yeah, we can do I movie think it's nights. a good idea. Come yeah. on. We want to have different uh, events for different people because nev not everyone likes to read. So uh, movie nights is a good idea. Yeah, we're we're idea. open to any suggestions. Yes, yeah. we are actually. You have, we you have to book put a suggestion box. We do. Yes. We have at our, at our meeting. That's a suggestion <laughs> email. That's a suggestion we email. Yeah, yeah people, people have been sending us tes texts lately. Uh, telling us that why don't you do this and that and that yeah. that makes us really happy that we're actually um, people can tell us what they want and uh, we're going to try our best to yeah people to can that. contact us on our email as well we forgot to mention yeah, that we have an email it's but are they email. offering their help i mean texting something uh, i mean a lot of people they have big words to say but when you actually need them to work and you need them to do something oh. that they're not available are you having problems with that they're they're telling us suggestions like why don't you do a lecture about this and this and this uh, they're not offering, we're, we're not open to volunteers right now at this level, but maybe when we expand, or definitely when we expand, we're going to be needing volunteers with us. So we haven't been approached by anyone saying they want to volunteer because we haven't opened that opportunity yet to volunteer. Yeah, but we will in the future. Inshallah. Now, uh, your, your logo is um, a Club Ibad, of course. Mm. It's the, the same as the name. Mm -hmm. But I know that you told me that the logo is red in color. Mm -hmm. Why red? Oh, it's both colors. Actually, we didn't want to go pink because pink is too girly. So, <laughs> so red kind of uh, red is kind of powerful, yet at the same time it's feminine. So yeah, red is good. I think so. That's why we chose red. Oh my yeah. gosh, uh, it's a very simple logo. Yeah, it is a very simple logo, yeah. and I love it so much. Yeah. Yes, I we go with simple logos. Simplicity is best, and I mean yes. the choice of red. I mean it's really nice. As you said, it really empowers us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And seeing red is, you know, it's lovely and nice, and mm -hmm. it's better than pink for sure. Doctor <laughs> uh, Noor, I just have to ask. Uh, you're a graduate from abroad. You graduated from Bahrain. Um, did that affect your, I mean, um, your friendship with the doctors over here, or um, was that a hindrance? I mean, from Dr. Naela here from Kuwait University, I'm mm -hmm. sure she should meet a lot of doctors over there. So did that affect um, you and your work with Tabibat? Actually, no, it didn't. It didn't and it doesn't. I, I, I can't even remember where I met Naela. It's just like we're instantly friends. Yeah. And it feels like we've been friends <laughs> forever. <laughs> Everyone's been so nice. And um, even with the other girls, they, they just welcomed me into the group like one of their own, even though I haven't met them because I was in, in Bahrain before. But um, no, I haven't had any problems with them. That's, oh, good. that's really nice. 
Now um, we are going to go for a short break and we will continue our talk, so stay tuned. hyperactivity, and impulsive behavior. Characteristics of ADHD are inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. Recent research has indicated that ADHD could be genetic. Although the exact cause of ADHD is debatable, an imbalance of certain neurotransmitters is believed to be the primary cause of ADHD symptoms. Treatment of ADHD includes stimulant drugs, behavior modification, and parental counsel. I think with uh, the polio vaccine, there was an issue of um, it being related to the uh, autism, but I think this theory is uh, very, very wrong, and everybody should take their yeah. vaccines. Uh, but for the flu yeah. vaccine, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's completely safe, don't you think, Dr. Naila? I think the flu vaccine is safe, and there's evidence uh, to prove that there are certain people who should take it, yeah. of course, no. uh, diabetics, uh, immunocompromised, immunocompromised not immuno I mean, patients who have the propensity to become immunocompromised, like diabetics, um, sickle cell disease, probably some other, because I know diabetes. Unfortunately, and I've been searching because I'm, I was so against the flu vaccine because I'm very, uh, like, um, natural um, immunization, yeah. I mean, um, immunity of our own uh, bodies, but apparently the CDC suggests or it's asked actually um, recommends that every person more than six months of age gets a yearly vaccination. I think up to the age of 50. I've been looking so it's much for evidence actually against... Until, until elderly yeah. patients. Probably 60? It's, it's actually yeah. really for everybody. And the, the, the good thing about flu vaccine is there are two, two types available. Mm -hmm. and there are the nasal spray, which is not available in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. And the nasal spray gives better, um, you know, effects on children. Mm -hmm. But for the adults, an intramuscular shot or a uh, subcutaneous shot mm -hmm. is, is the best. It's the best way to do it. And um, the thing is, I should have taken my flu vaccine. Shot. Did any of you take the flu vaccine? No. I never took a flu vaccine. I've never had it. You never did. I'm still alive. I don't think I will. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sh I should be promoting it. I took it last year, and I totally forgot to take it this year. But if you're going to take your flu vaccine, the best uh, time to have it is actually from 
you know, they say mm -hmm. probably even as early as August mm -hmm. until January or February, until the winter months is over. And you can take it anytime. But I mean, if you got your flu already. Yeah, I got I my flu last week. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. But there are tons of viruses, come yeah. on. Yeah. I'd rather have the flu than get stuck by a needle. Really? Really? I, I took the vaccine. <laughs> I, I, got I have the a flu. few needles for myself. <laughs> yes, I know that's weird. Is there a psychological thing <laughs> between doctors and needles? Do you think so? Probably. Well, you can't be a surgeon and be afraid of needles. <laughs> no, I have no problem sticking people yeah. with needles. Okay. I have a problem I'm with me it. being... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to give my psychoanalysis <laughs> on you. <laughs> I don't want to be injected. I don't think yeah. we like assuming the sick role. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's probably yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem with doctors. Like, we hate being sick. That's true. Mm -hmm. And if we get sick, we don't really... We're not good patients. Doctors <laughs> make the worst <laughs> patients. So, it's funny about you have this role of... Um, Of yes. these topics, for example, uh, breast, uh, you know, health, yes, and yes. you know, these kind yes. of things that are important to women. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, yeah, we always support medical causes as well as other non-medical humanitarian causes, mm -hmm. and we try to to raise awareness about them through our Instagram and Twitter accounts for now. And we might plan a walkathon on different uh, awareness issues later on. Mm -hmm. We we um, we try to uh, find out what the health days are. For example, the World Diabetes Day. World COPD Day to raise awareness and to help people raise, aware, um, raise awareness towards these causes. Um, also, Violence Against Women Day. Uh, so we have uh, a lot of um, child rights, for example. We want to do a walkathon to support the uh, Kuwait Child Rights Society in the future to uh, help promote uh, child rights in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. But and again, as um, we're asking, are we asking or, or are we targeting the female? No, this will be a public that? event. Yeah, oh, these kinds of events will be more <coughs> for the public. Yes. But I mean, targeting women as well. I mean, yeah. yes. by choosing the certain topics that do empower men, women yes. in a lot of ways, I, I think it does send a good message to the people. Yeah. Yes. And um, do you have other things like for doctors? Like, okay, we mentioned the support for women part, but what about being a doctor? Do you support us as doctors if we get into trouble? For some reason, uh, would oh. you be, you know, back us up or something? Well, well, we'll, we'll, we'll always back up the, the right side. Yes, uh, we actually, we have supported, um, we have supported um, certain doctors that there was something a few weeks back. We actually have supported a cause for that female doctor, particular female doctor, um, uh, because, uh, because, um, we know she's a good doctor and that she de deserves our support as a group. And so if anything like this happens, uh, we will support the right side. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. this is the problem is about how to address these issues, yes. especially with the decisions of doctors. Yes. I mean, it's very important that people do respect the decision of the doctor and what they make yes. as. This is, you know, um, when we make decisions, it's always for the benefit of the patient true, yes. and for the public as well. So this is the thing that everybody should understand. That's true. And do you think that you do support this? We of do. Course. We do support it, and we have supported it in that certain situation. We have supported it all the way. That's amazing. Yes. That's really inspiring. Yes. Thank I mean, you. it's um, you should um, totally do this those seminars for little girls <laughs> who are aspiring <laughs> doctors. Yeah, we yeah, should. We should. I mean, it's a really good to see. Yeah, we you should. I should be in your team now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I we so all want to so be in your team. This, this is the whole idea. It's just for uh, uh, female doctors to inspire each other. And to empower to get, each yeah. other. If, so we're, if you're going already. to be involved and if there's uh, certain problems about doctors or if you're going to be involved in the public health, don't you feel that this might lead you towards a political path or standing with administration specifically? Uh, we're trying to stay out of politics for now because it's a very tricky area. And um, we all hate politics. We, yeah. we do. At a certain sort of. Yeah. But uh, sometimes you can't avoid it. And um, in that particular situation, we, we couldn't avoid it. We had, we had yeah. to take we a stand. We have to. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's uh, kind of a very big, broad topic, yes. isn't it? Yes. And, you know, you, we sort of don't want to get into political no. problems. <laughs> we're, we're, we're a volunteer group. And uh, yeah. I think we're entitled to, for, to an opinion, at least. Yeah, and, of course. Um, 
and to express that opinion as a group. Absolutely, yeah. I agree with you. And um, the thing is about Tabibat, it just gives us so much, you know, positive, positive, positive ideas, and uh, we love that about, you know, Tabibat. And of course, you do have this positive energy about your girls. So just tell us, you know, what is your motivation? Uh, to do, you know, to, to do, do the tabibat, is there anything that inspires you just to, um, you know, mm -hmm. in your personalities? Actually, what, what inspires us was just your reaction right now. Just the reaction yeah. we get from people, people being excited about wanting to join, about wanting to, to create a change, about wanting to help each other. This is what keeps us going. And we keep each other going. Yeah. Was I'm there an organization that, m that inspired you to make this? Society, or was this just a pure um, friendship circle that made this brilliant idea? Well, uh, we had actually worked together uh, for a brief amount of time in a similar group, but uh, it didn't last too long. Uh, so we kind of stayed friends after that, and then about maybe three or four years later, decided to do something on our own. Don't you fear this will be the fate of Tabibat too? That no, group I did not. I think it's different. On. We're more independent now. Um, uh, we make our own decisions, which is really good. Um, we s we um, we have the support of each other. We keep each other going. Actually, you know, it's it's not really easy. I'm sure you know that volunteer work is not it's really easy. There are really days hard. there are days where you just want to give up, uh, but we keep each other going, and that's what's important. And we've actually, we're doing, I think we're doing very well yeah. now, three months into it. We hope, we hope that we'll continue to grow and expand. That's really good. And um, I mean, Dr. Naila, of course, because I know you personally and mm. you're such a good friend. Um, and I know that you're a sweetheart as well. But um, in Tabibat, what sort of, you know, part of your personality you think, uh, you know, it just, you know, makes you she's um, still a sweetheart <laughs> she's <laughs> always a sweetheart do you feel bossy or i try Aww. not to be bossy <laughs> no, is always a sweetheart <laughs> i believe in democracy which is really good i don't I, I we don't make a decision or i don't um step make a step forward uh, if if one of the six members isn't happy about it so it's really important that we're all happy with this decision. If it's not, we'll either postpone it for later, to discuss it later in our meetings, uh, or we'll just cancel it. Uh, because it's really important to keep something like this going, that all the members are happy with what's being done, because if one person isn't happy, it's just not worth it. Yeah, absolutely. I hope I don't come off as bossy. I come off as persistent. Which is good. I mean, yeah. this is the, the thing persistent about you that makes you and yeah, makes it work. And sometimes yeah. uh, unrealistically optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you need that yeah, in voluntary that. work. Of course, of course. Yeah. Always aim high. Yes. Uh, what about you, Dr. Nora? What do you think? I can't talk about myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's. Uh, she's. I think she gives energy to the group. She's the youngest in our group. Um, I think she gives some really good energy to the group. Yeah, really good energy. She's also, we're persistent together. Yeah. Oh, so that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Does she so use the her psychiatry knowledge to try and persi persuade you to like her ideas? Or if try she to does, <laughs> I haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> She's <good>. really good. <laughs> no, 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 not very good. It's like hypnosis. Yeah, I don't think I it's a psychiatric, <laughs> psychiatric <laughs> thing though. <laughs> We don't hypnotize people. <laughs> <laughs> My boss is going to really kill me if I say that on TV. <laughs> but it's really, she brings a lot of good energy into the group, as well as the other members. Everyone brings something in. Uh, yeah. We have, uh, we also have someone um, uh, responsible. We gave the responsibility to her as a financial committee, yeah. uh, for she's example. Really and she's really good with money. Treasury. Uh, for example, if we are going to be having anything like uh, an event, we're... we're for now, we're self-funded. We're self -funded. It's between the six of us. So after a lecture, where the, for example, where the, the dinner, we have a simple dinner after every lecture, a simple dinner and talking. And that's usually, that's usually from our self-funded because everyone's self-funded in the beginning. It's just so, Kuwaiti yeah. hospitality. Yeah, Kuwaiti hospitality. We, we need have to, to have, have something food. nice at the yeah. end of a lecture. So we have someone responsible for that, and she's really good. Uh, we have also someone who has uh, connections uh, at the consultant level, which is also really good. And um, 
the two family physicians that we have are really good because family physicians are really good at attending these uh, these events because re they're relatively their schedule. I don't know what you mean. No <laughs> family it's physicians being able no, to attend. A bit we do have a hectic <laughs> schedule as well. Yeah, but it's relatively maybe yeah. compared to 24-hour on calls and. As opposed to me, <laughs> that's why no one it's ever invited us surgeons <laughs> to, oh to those yeah, groups. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so really to join. Um, off topic, we have a question from um, from a viewer that's asking uh, regarding the patients of special needs, elderly and uh, special needs uh, children. Um, is there any uh, interest in, in those kinds of uh, patients in your group and is there something that would be in the future for them? Um, if they're suggesting that we can have like kind of an educational lecture yes. for doctors, um, I think that's a very good area. Um, it's kind of, um, as you said, it's kind of underrepresented mm -hmm. as well um, in the whole uh, mm -hmm. medical literature. Of course. So uh, that's an interesting topic. We we should talk about that um, to all to all kinds of physicians. They should have some knowledge about that. So we'll put that on the agenda. Yeah, we actually follow some yeah. special needs organizations, and. Um, Hopefully, we'll be able to uh, make a good uh, uh, connection with them so that we can cooperate and they can come give us a talk, we can give them a talk. Especially about the elderly. Yeah, I think mm. elderly... And geriatrics is very yes, it's very underrepresented. underrepresented. It's I'm true. I'm going to be biased. I did, a <laughs> I, did a, I did a lecture for my for my specialty last week about, uh, about geriatrics or about the elderly. And uh, it really is an eye-opener about... Um, it was about mental health and the elderly, and it really is an eye-opener. And we should watch out for um, that segment of the population. So that is a good idea. We need to talk about that. Yeah, we might get her yeah. to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, give us a seminar. That's, that's, that's yeah, true. Sneak peek. Yeah, I think it's, it's important yeah, to address it's true. important issues in the society as well. And, uh, of course, one of the issues in Kuwait which bothers me all the time is um, that people don't take care of the environment. Yes. And yeah. I hate that. Yeah. And I hate that how people are, you know, whether they're, you know, Kuwaiti or non Kuwaiti, they, you know, just see each other and, you know, they just throw things they on the you know, streets and mm. they think that somebody's already going to pick up the dirt and even, you know, they're not taking care mm -hmm. of the desert very well. Mm -hmm. Like, I used to love going camping, but now I hate it because I see dirt everywhere mm -hmm. which is very terrible like you are you know this is something that I think very important to address yeah. so what do you think the role of Talibat in, uh, in doing that well starting off we a bunch of tree huggers <laughs> yeah we're really pro-environment yeah. and to prove that we wanted in the beginning to make business cards and then we decided not to because uh, one of the things is that people just take them and throw them away yeah. and so we saved about a hundred cards <laughs> worth of trees. Yeah. So we decided to go digital and yeah. just not not kill any more trees. And that's one of the reasons why we didn't do why why we didn't make cards. And I love how KTV Two is recycling their cards. I know yes, it's, it's just for just in case that nobody knows what's going on. <laughs> yeah. And I know that our director will hate me for this, but she brought it it's up. Really I'm but sorry, you know, recycling but I really we just it, you know okay. use we use yellow. <laughs> yellow paper That's really and good. it's really good yeah. i mean just you know doing whatever you can for the environment yeah. is the best uh, the best true. thing and um doing uh, of course taking care of the environment other in other ways for example you know um advocating the importance of not littering for example mm -hmm. not just littering don't, don't litter recycling recycling i i started uh, recycling i made my my house start recycling a couple of months ago and the amount of stuff that accumulates before the recycling company comes yeah. and takes everything is just outrageous. I mean, I mean, if you don't see, if you don't actually see it, you don't know how much uh, waste you're putting into the environment. Would you consider consider um, broadening that to the hospitals? You know, that's a good idea. Yeah. I know we some primary care that. centers that have had the recycling bins but outside. The amount of paper that it's we true. use yeah, is it's true. unbelievable. It's crazy. It's I try n uh, even at work. I try not to print a, as many papers as I can, but sometimes you have to in files. Yeah. Uh, and uh, some uh, primary care centers they have recycling bins, and that would be that's a good idea to yeah. just expand this to a uh, hospital level. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, uh, not only that, it's also the 
um, showing the people how to use the recycling bins because yeah. Yeah. a lot of people, even doctors, don't know what this is for. A lot of doctors don't recycle. Yeah. That's really disappointing. Yeah. It is yeah. really disappointing, and I think our roles, our doctors, is actually beyond than the care of the health of patients. That's true. I think it's beyond that, and it's, it's taking care basically of your country That's true. and of your people in different ways. And uh, I'm glad you two are here. And um, of course, Tabibat, you as Tabibat, you have a wonderful message to, to you know, for the people. So, what do you have, you know, advice for what you know, last for it for the people before we end the show? We um, we want to uh, we want to tell uh, the doctors or the female doctors that we're all the same. Uh, juniors, seniors, and uh, minor and major specialities or subspecialties, and yet we're all different and we can bring something different in. Uh, there are so many doctors that we don't know, even for um, because we're gr we've graduated fr from all over the world. So there are so many doctors that we don't know, and uh, it would be really nice to get to know each other, Absolutely. to learn more about systems outside, for example. Absolutely. And, yeah. and we'd like. Um, We'd like uh, the uh, fe Kuwaiti female doctors to just become, uh, to become happy both inside and outside of work, as I said before, and to be well-rounded and more knowledgeable in things outside medicine as well as inside medicine. So um, the message is just basically we're here, and you're welcome to join us yes. and to help us, and uh, we'll make a good circle together. Thank you, Dr. Naela. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Noura. And also, we advise um, all female doctors, uh, physicians, pharmacists, anyone who is in the medical field to also follow Tabibat on Instagram and on Twitter. And uh, so we'll wrap up our show tonight. And uh, thank you for tuning in, tuning in with us this week. And we hope to see you next week on the uh, Healthy Life. Thank you very much for watching us and I would like to thank the doctors as well and I wish everybody a good night and see you next week.